My name is Todd Barnes. And if we could just take one moment just to recognize this achievement. Because see, as an adult, this has been a dream of mine. And hopefully as I start and share my story, you will understand that you have the ability to copy this recipe too. See, it's not so much for me just to tell my story today. It's for you to receive it and you go create your own. So I want to take you to just a normal day of practice at Ed Memorial High School. But it wasn't quite so normal. See, on September 15th of 1992, after two years of playing quarterback and a lot of lofty goals, I'm relegated to the practice squad or the scout team. And I'm running the ball to the left, and then I put my hand on the ground because I hated to go down early. And then I turn, and a teammate hits me head on. And I'm laying there on the ground. I was not knocked out, was not unconscious. I can hear them yelling still to this day, don't touch him, don't touch him. I realize the coaches and teammates are scared. They've rallied around me, and you've seen this scene, unfortunately, on TV. I know 911 now has been called for me. There was a uniqueness that day, because was, there was a unique person in my life. My father worked on campus. So when he heard the ambulances, he came to practice. And at some point during all this chaos going on, and me still not being rolled over, once they roll me over, I see my father over the top of me, crying. The Navy veteran, I'd only seen him call, cry twice, once at his father's funeral and at this moment at that point in my life. I decided that day I would be who I was made to be. I started encouraging him. Hey, Dad, I don't know how I'm going to be okay. I will get past this. See, with such a topic of moving beyond, I, had, I was so delusional as a dreamer, I didn't even know what I was saying to my own father in this moment. But I was encouraging him. I was going, Dad, whatever we're going to face, we're going to do, and I'm going to be okay. Tape down, he follows me over to the Edmund, um, Edmund Hospital. And over at Edmund Hospital, I am explained, after they've cut my equipment off, and I've had several jerseys over the years as a lot of athletes, but on, this one comes with a certain amount of pride. It was cut off on me as September 15th of 1992. While they're trying to discuss surgery or not surgery, and even though this x-ray is not from that time, you can still see the leftover remains of what is an avulsion fracture at C3, where the ligament rips off your neck from the force and pulls bone with it, you can see that this one doesn't quite look like the others. It's protruding out a little bit. I've also got a compression fracture running through the vertebral body and down the bottom, but I'm stable. I'll use my term for it. My spinal cord was bruised, not severed. So at some point, I start feeling everything, and the tingling starts to subside. I start getting that delusional believer in me again. And so while they're out in the hallway strategizing surgery, halo, what options I've got, and I can kind of hear this as a 16-year-old and what's going on, and I hear my dad being a part of it, I decide to scoot myself to the edge of the bed and say, I'm going to try to stand up. I can feel my feet. And then all of a sudden, the orthopedic surgeon runs back in and goes, son, you got to sit down. We will tape you to that bed. You have drastically hurt your neck and your safety for the rest of your life right now until we know that you're stable is our utmost importance being the delusional dreamer that i am encouraging my father through this event here i am just a few months later this is me encouraging my teammates this is the brace that I'm wearing at that time. I didn't grow up in today's era, so we don't have a lot of documentation. When I was preparing for this talk, mom and I were going through certain photos, and there's just not a bunch of them. We didn't take them. It was a different time. But this is a teammate. This is a picture of me with my teammates, and we're getting ready for a state playoff game. This is just months after surgery. I was in some kind of brace for about 12 weeks. The collision was so violent that it I had not realized that I had separated and toured my rotator cuff. But in December, I started trying to think about what was going to be like. Could I play other sports? Could I do other things? So I started thinking beyond the moment that I was in, 
with a delusional attitude to see where I could go. And that is one of the secret recipes that I want you to take out of this talk. Here I am, 14 months later, walking out as a captain in a state championship game for Ed Memorial High School. And if we stopped the talk right here, I think you would be like, man, that's great. But see, I don't think that that really talks about going beyond, and I don't think it really defines who I am. So I want to use a phrase, and I want you to think about this, and I'm going to call it, it's delusional trying. It's trying when if you said what you were about to try out loud, everyone would laugh at you. So the kid that broke his neck from Ed Memorial High School that barely caught six footballs didn't make a whole lot of an impact from a statistical thing my senior year. I hope I made an impact leadership. Decides to walk on at the University of Oklahoma. Not just any school, right? So I told you I was a dreamer. I can remember as a kid being in my parents' house with PJs on with feet in them and sliding down the hallway and scoring touchdowns for the Sooners. I am telling you, I went way beyond what anybody would think that my career could go. I walked on, and we don't have time to go into all the trials that went into what went on, but I'll highlight a few. I walked on with 70 other people. They gave me a pair of grays. They didn't even have a logo on them. That's how athletic they thought I was. They knew they were going to run us off. By spring ball, we were down to five. I had gotten a locker. The first day of spring ball, I break my hand. I didn't miss a day of practice, and I didn't drop a ball that spring. And that cast brought attention to my gift to push through anything and to push through and try. I love the ability and that mindset. So if we're going to be dreaming and we're going to go beyond, we've got to be resilient with that delusional effort because that effort was going to come into play. See, I thought I had made a varsity locker. At the end of summer, they tell me they got too many walk-ons to come back. So they're telling me, you're not going to get to come out with the varsity team. You can come out when school starts, when our numbers can go up, which is like the death sentence for a walk-on athlete. So strength coach pulled me aside, and he said, I got a task for you. You need to win the fitness test. If you get your name in the paper, they'll have to tell someone else to stay home. So at that time, our fitness test was a two-mile run, and when I started it, I ran for my life because I remember what it felt like to lay on the ground. And I remember running for my life, and I remember all those things that I wanted to do. See, when I was going through those moments of laying there and all the injury, I wasn't taking inventory because I wasn't old enough to have my life flash before my eyes. It was my future, but I was willing to dream to go beyond. So after walking on and earning a scholarship and playing enough to letter varsity two years at the University of Oklahoma, I decided to leave. You talk about a phone conversation to your father. I'm the first Barnes at that time that's in college to try on pace to graduate. And I have earned a scholarship at my childhood dream. And I told him, I don't belong here anymore. Drove around to 100 schools. It felt like it was more like 10. Got rejected from all of them. Two of them in particular I wanted to play at. Harding University and Abilene Christian. Those coaches told me there was no way they had money for me. But see, my dad had told me on that phone, and I won't share that whole phone conversation. That will stay private. But I will tell you, it was very clear to not come home until someone was going to pay for school. So the University of Central Oklahoma stepped up, but it took a delusional act of trying again. I walked back to the University of Oklahoma where a coach told me if I came up empty, he would help me. So Chris Thurman made a call to Chuck Bailey, who wasn't even the receiver's coach. Oh, and by the way, I played a position in college that I had never played. Um, I always told you I was smart with my kinesiology degree from the University of Central Oklahoma. The line was shorter for wideouts than it was for defensive backs. That's how I made that decision. This is my first college touchdown. And not that my statistics mean anything, and that's absolutely not what we're here about today. That meant an awful lot to me, not because of the statistic. Six years prior, I'm laying on the ground and had the attitude to go get better every single day. Man, life was hard. There was a lot of challenges. This play right here is in a case where my UCO jersey hangs in my office. My dad and I love this picture because I think this resembles of who I am. How delusional I'm fighting for after I already have gotten the first down that three grown men can't take me down. That was the spirit in which I wanted 
to leave with my teammates. So after graduating from the University of Central Oklahoma and being a two-time all-conference player and having a ton of success and putting records into the books that now have been broken, I stand in amazement. But that's not why I'm getting the opportunity to speak here today. I thought it was. But when I was preparing for this, I realized how irrelevant at this moment in my life, this story was 30 years ago, except one part of it. It was the recipe that I was going to need going through the next four years of my life. So we all went through the pandemic together, including not seeing family members very often. But in my journal in January of 2020, I wrote a very powerful statement that I didn't know what it was going to feel like to do. So right before pandemic, I write, I've got to lead my family through divorce. Something I never dreamed about. Never imagined. So instead of moving out, I'm moving down the hallway. We all remember pandemic, right? So I don't want to be without my daughter. So I've moved down the hallway. I remember one of my favorite nights. It's like, hey, Harper, you awake? (laughs) You want to laugh and giggle? Because I was needing something, knowing the hurt that I was going to go through. And then we were all going through the challenges of life. So those two things are compounded. This memory is embedded in my heart forever. I am showing my daughter her apartment where we're going to move. And she's only known one house her whole life. Now, I'm trying to sell her the excitement with this. But you can't see the tears that I'm holding back. The reason I remember this moment and the reason it's important It's two days later, we've all moved, right? And you know the fatigue that goes on when you move, right? You're taking stuff out and you're putting it somewhere. I even had a friend help me during the day while I was at work um, build Harper's bunk bed so that that night, that first Friday night that we could be in there, we could celebrate local food place right by us and some frozen yogurt afterwards. And then we stayed up and played video games so light and I was so tired. But that night, was the night that I lost my father. He had a heart attack. They took him to Oklahoma Heart Hospital, and it just ripped my soul apart. They couldn't wake me that night. I was so tired. And when I got there, I knew enough when the doctor was talking to me that, man, at some point, this isn't going to be good. They were able to get him breathing again with support, but he was no longer with us. So then I was going to have to lean on an event. So I went home, and I didn't take much with me in divorce, but I took this jersey, and I busted it out of a case that my dad had made for me. And I wanted to feel the resilience and the recipe. Because, see, a lot of you can't relate to breaking your neck or even having a tragic injury and then going back and playing high school, much less walking on in college football. And I would love, and I'm so proud of that. But some of you can relate to when life is just piling on and you're getting the wind knocked out of you and you were too tired to get up. And I thought about that and I thought about back then, how do I get through this? A friend of mine visited me back when I broke my neck. And like any good friend would do, they're trying to tease you, right? A little bit, get you to light. You know, it's a a tragic moment. He knows what's going on. We're smart enough to know that I'm laying here at my parents' house and I've been asked to do nothing and move very little. Now, this isn't the original weight, but he brought me a one-pound weight. And that's where the idea of get better today started. He knew I couldn't lift anything, and he knew the challenges that I had around me. He was just asking me to get a little bit better. See, the crazy thing is, when life was going so out of control, I had to lean on little things. And getting better some days was just getting up. Getting better some days was just trying to go to work. See, my dad passed and never got to hear me speak. So when I knew I was going to get through this, it was because I started dreaming again. And the things that were put on my heart no matter how crazy they sounded out loud, I would try them. So when an opportunity came to be a part of TEDx, I took a risk. 
I don't do public speaking, but I do do encouragement. So I'm going to leave you with two challenges in closing. The first one is, heaven forbid you're one of those people right now that's going through life event. Heaven forbid, but still my recipe, please. Delusionally start to dream with that effort around trying. So if you'll dream it, delusionally try, and then add a little get better attitude every day, you're going to be okay. And if your life is okay today, I leave you with this. Show up and bring someone their one pound dumbbell. I can't tell you what a privilege it is to walk out here. But see, it's been a privilege for me to walk since I was 16 years old. Thank you so much for listening and the opportunity, and I hope it plays an impact moving forward. I can't thank you enough. So I want you to do one thing. I want you to own your moments, and I want you to get better today. Thank you so much.